Because we only can have wills, healthcare proxies, power of attorney documents, instead of being legally married like heterosexuals, and all we're legally afforded, frankly, is death. It's only, they only are useful if one of us gets sick or dies. It doesn't celebrate our life together. I thought I, since I'm only going to have something official in death, I thought I'd make it as elegant as possible. So I made this mortuary statue in an American neoclassical form, which is a nation, an American nationalist form to address what I consider as a federal failure. Um, American neoclassical sculpture is a specifically American form, and it's a, Ameri since it is, it's a nationalist form. It's what everyone used in the 19th century. A lot of clay maquettes, I made plasters, um, and, and scanned the plaster. Rough cutting was hap happened by a machine, and then another carver and myself carved it. I mean, is it yourselves a few years ago? Is it yourselves today? Well, I call them idealized resemblances. I mean, how many grave markers are you going to have? Only one. How many times am I going to make a, a, my grave marker? Only once. So even though it weighs over three tons, you know, you know, they're idealized resemblances. That's the best way to say it. So this grave marker was made, and when you guys die, it's going to go on... You're going to be, it's going to... It's already on our plot that we own in Woodlawn Cemetery. And it's designed as America's Pierre Lachaise. It's like one of the premier American examples of the garden um, cemetery movement. In the so century. your death is an art project. Yeah. I'm a very practical person. <laughs> very much have your queerness uh, as a subject of your artwork. It runs through it. It's not in every single piece. And the project I'm working on now is more humanist, but... But there's always a social justice theme running through every piece. Absolutely. Where can people see the, the marble statue? At the Station Museum of Contemporary Art in Houston. And you said it's traveling, or it's going to go back to Woodlawn um, and then back No, out? no, no. It's never, it's never going back to Woodlawn now. The bronze will be there. Um, because when I was researching making this statue, I went to all the cemeteries in Paris. And the marble, between pollution and pollen and everything, you know, um, corrodes. will corrode and, you know, eventually, you know, just crumble. Um, and what they do in Paris is they kind of replace them with bronzes. And then people come and rub different body parts for good luck. And by switching it with a bronze, it kind of extends the performative nature of the project because we'll get to see what the favorite parts are. It's um, the third most visited plot in Woodlawn Cemetery. It's Duke Ellington, Miles Davis, and then us. I don't know when I'm going to die. I don't know how. But I get some sense of comfort knowing where I'm going to end up. And I get to think about how I'm going to live my life between that moment and now. What kind of work do I want to make? What kind of person do I want to be? And um, when a writer from the New York Times was interviewing me about the piece, he was saying, well, don't you think this, you know, I'm just going to play devil's advocate. Don't you think this, you know, could just be seen as a publicity stunt? And I said, well, number one, I'm returning American sculpture to its original American venue, the, 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 the cemetery. But also, I said, it's really our plot. This is where we're going to be buried. This isn't a joke. Just like it isn't a joke that we don't get to get married. It's no joke.